Well, alright then. Hey everybody, praise be to God, and welcome back to the logical journey of the Zumbinis. I'm Colorful Arty as always. So, we're continuing our group at Shelter Rock, where we left off last time. One thing I want to do, you are going in the cubbyhole, because I'm leading this group. I'm the leader. So, we now have the choice, do we want to go up towards the swamp, or down towards the woods? I personally am going to go down towards the woods. I think those are better challenges, and, um... I think that if you go south into the woods, the challenges are a bit more fun and just a bit more interesting. So let's go south. Marty and I are leading. There's no sense leaving it up to chance. Lure the fleens off the tree branch. Welcome to the second world, the deep dark forest. And this first challenge, titled Fleens, is probably one of the most interesting and cool logical challenges you'll encounter in the game. Let's learn a little bit about this. Fleens! What's this? The fleens are blocking the progress of the Zumbinis. Lure the tree fleens off of the beehive branch to free the Zumbinis. This will bother the bees and chase the fleens away. Each fleen will chase a Zumbini with hair, eyes, nose, and feet that go with its hair, eyes, nose, and feet. A wrong guess will send a retreating Zumbini into another branch, which can only hold a maximum of six Zumbinis. Once the branch is full, each wrong guess will send a Zumbini back to Shelter Rock. So kind of interesting. So you can see there's one guy down here, the rest are on this cliffside, and three are on the branch with the beehive on it. We want to lure these guys off the branch, and we do that by picking Zubinis here, placing them in the spotlight here. Or at least, there's a spotlight there if we hover over them. And this will cause one of the fleens to jump down and chase them up the tree onto this branch. The reason, uh, what determines which fleen will chase which Zubini is their features. So you can see... Each fleen has its own unique hairstyle, own unique eyes, unique nose, and unique feet. So it's got spiky green hair, spiky purple hair, blue ponytail, a red bandana, as well as viking hair. They also have bandit masks, sunglasses, cyborg visors, shifty eyes, and triple eyes. They have yellow noses, cyan noses, purple noses, black noses, and I'm not sure if there's actually any here, but their orange nose is also a possibility for them. Oh, yep, there's one. There's the orange nose. Then feet, you've got brown boots, red shoes, tank treads, motorcycle wheels, and rockets. So it's pretty cool. So each one of their features is going to correspond to one of the Zumbini's features. So it could be Viking hair corresponds to green hat hair, or red shoes correspond to propellers. It really depends. So a good way to start this is to just take a Zumbini and see what happens. So I will lead. So as you can see, that lured that fleen down here, and now the that fleen chased us up. Also, it's not outright stated, but it's heavily implied that the fleens are distant relatives of the Zumbinis, which is kind of interesting. So now we look at this and we can see, all right, spiky hair corresponds to Viking hair, sunglasses correspond to cyborg uh, lenses, green noses correspond to black noses, and bikes correspond to rockets. So we can look at this fleen and our, our Zumbini up here and compare it to the Zumbini, or the fleens up in this tree branch. So we have one up here that has Viking hair, so there's going to need to be somebody with spiky hair. Also, all three of them have bandit masks, which is kind of cool. So we need to keep an eye out for that. Apart from that, everything else has to be different. No feature that I have corresponds to any of these fleens. So let's try to find somebody with spiky hair and nothing else in common. Uh, this guy fits the bill. He has spiky hair, but different eye, different nose, and different feet. So let's try him. Uh. 
So as you can see, that was not the correct fleeing, but that gives us a lot of good information. As you can see, we now know that Cy uh, Cyclops' eyes correspond to Bandit Mask, so every fleeing in this tree corresponds to a Cyclops, so the free Zumbinis that we need to put out all will be Cyclopses. Likewise, we also know that red, Zumbini Red Noses correspond to fleeing or Yellow Noses. So, we know this guy needs to have spiky hair, be a Cyclops, and have a red nose, and then different feet. The only guy who fits the bill is this guy, so this is going to trigger this fleeing to jump down. Likewise, now we know that tank treads correspond to Spreans, which is pretty cool. So, looking at these guys, both of these guys will have to be a Cyclops. And one of them is going to have to have a propeller. So, let's look for our Cyclops propellers. He's a Cyclops and has a propeller. And that's it. So, this guy is going to make him jump down. All right, so we can hold two more Zumbinis up there before people start getting chased back to the shade tree and or for, to shelter rock, and then we have to leave without them or all go back to shelter rock. So looking at this guy, he's going to be a Cyclops. So let's look at our Cyclopses we have left. We have him, we have her, and her, and that guy. So it's going to be one of these four guys. We also know this guy has absolutely nothing in common with any of the other Zumbinis we uh, put up. So we know it can't be her, because she has a red nose. Those two guys have red noses. Uh, we know it can't be a blue nose, so it can't be that guy. So it's going to be one of these two people. Now let's also look. Their feet has to be different from all the other people up there. We know she has a spring, and springs correspond to tank treads. That guy does not have tank treads, so it can't be her. So for process of elimination... The last remaining person it could be is this guy. This Zumbini is going to give us the victory. Well done! Thank you! Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, when the bees come out, they can take one of three shapes. They can be, have an arrow shape like they had, they can turn into scissors, as well as a thundercloud. All of them are pretty cool. And <laughs> the Zumbinis are just cheering like crazy. That's so cute. All right, let's go forward. Hurry, Zumbinis. Ula, the forest's foremost. And perhaps only, band leader is about to begin rehearsals. She'll be closing the hotel for the night, so scamper into a room. Guests? Ah, guests. I'll be right down. Make yourselves cozy. Welcome! You're just in time for tomorrow's concerto! Help yourselves to a room. I got rehearsal. Go ahead, find yourselves a room. So welcome to the second logical puzzle of the Deep Dark Forest, Hotel Dementia. So let's take a look and see what we're up against. Hotel Dementia. After a long journey, the Zumbinis need rooms to stay in overnight. However, only Zumbinis with one feature in common can room together. For example, Zumbinis with sunglasses may be able to stay in the same room, but all others must find a different room. Try to figure out whether hair, eyes, noses, or feet are the features that matter tonight. So we've got five different rooms. That corresponds to five different types of a given feature. We also have this clock up here. The clock is actually not a timer, but rather every time you try to put a Zumbini into the wrong room, they'll get kicked out of the room and time is going to pass. Once enough time has passed, the hotel will close its doors for the night, and you will not be able to put the Zumbinis in any of the rooms, and you will be forced to leave them behind, or go back to Shelter Rock, and try out all these challenges again. So, like the last time, just start by taking a Zumbini and put him in the first room. This will always be the right decision. 
So now it's time to figure out which features the Zombinis must have in common in order to room together. I've found that, maybe this is just my imagining things, but I find it's usually the same color noses can room together. So hey man, want a room? Nope, he does not want a room. So that means he'll have to go to the next room. Alright, so the clearly noses are not the thing that matter. Um, Maybe it's the same eyes can room together. So, hey man, you want to join the cool club? Yeah, he does. Excellent. And because he had no other features in common with me, that means it must have been the eyes that did it. So everybody with sunglasses come in here. Everybody with normal eyes can go into that room. Marty, you're going to go in here and you're going to have to... I spend the night with these guys, but that's okay because these tree trunks are ma massive, so there's going to be lots of rooms in this one tree trunk, so that's pretty cool. Uh, all Cyclopses go into this room. It's going to be a tight squeeze because there are a lot of you, but that's okay. No one's going to mind. So, <laughs> oh, and the guy who, ironically, the guy with sleepy eyes gets the last tree trunk all to himself to ensure he gets a good night's sleep. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Hey, that's cool! A place for everyone and everyone in a place! Well, thank you, Ula, and have a good night. Strike the targets, one and all, and watch for a pattern on Mudball Wall. So welcome to the last challenge of the Deep Dark Forest, Mudball Wall, and this is a really cool one. Mudball Wall. The Zumbinis need your help in getting over the wall to freedom. Using the Mudball Launcher, hit the sections of the wall with dots on them. The color and shape of the Mudball tells you what section it will hit. For example, green Mudballs might always hit the first row, and square shapes might always hit in the first column. So yeah, you see we've got this wall here. Some of them are light gray with little dots in it. Those are the ones we want to shoot with this machine. The number of dots on that will determine the number of Zumbinis that ca get catapulted over. So one with one dot will only let one Zumbini get catapulted over, whereas ones with three will let all three of them get catapulted over. There will always be the same number of dots equal to the number of Zumbinis you have, so you have to hit them all. And like it said, the where, where it hits on the wall will depend on what color and what shape it is. So a good way to start this is to just fire the first mud ball they give you. Alright, so purple uh, circle hit that part of the wall. Let's change the color to green. I like green. Oh, nice! Got lucky there. So now, as you can see, this circle and this circle were both in the second row of the wall. That means circles are all going to be in the second row. No other part of that row has any dots in it, so we need to change the shape. Let's try a star. And we also know there are... Uh, that means color determines column and shape determines row. So circles are in this row. Different shapes will be in different other rows. All green ones are going to be in this first column, and all purple ones will be in that last column. Because we have, in the purple column, three opportunities to hit different parts of the wall, let's make it purple and see where this takes us. Excellent. You also may have noticed that the more f times we fire mud balls, our mud supply is going down. If we run out of mud, we aren't going to be able to shoot more mud balls, and any Zumbini that didn't get catapulted up the wall, tough luck, we gotta leave them behind, or we all need to go back. Alright, so let's try it with a triangle now. Excellent. So we're doing pretty well. So now it's a 50-50 shot uh, for a square or a diamond. Let's try a square. Excellent. Alright. 
So that means squares are in the first row, circles are in the second row, diamonds are in the third row, because that's the one we haven't seen, triangles are in the fourth row, and stars are in the last row. Green is first column, purple's last column. That means that first column will be green, first row is square, so a green square will hit us right there. And this is going to change every time you play. Every time you play this one, the shapes and uh, colors and where they actually determine the aiming is going to change. Alright, well now we know Green Triangle is going to hit right there, so... All right, so we know another triangle of a different color is going to hit right there, so let's try red. All right, that's okay. Red goes in the fourth column, and stars go in the last row, so red star is going to hit right there. So this one Zumbini is the guy we have left. So we know the last one's going to be triangle, and it's a 50-50 shot between yellowish, orange, or blue. I like blue more, so let's try blue. Yes! Whoa! My! You've done exceptionally well! <laughs> carry on! Carry on! Oh, thank you, man. You're always so nice. And that ends the deep, dark forest. I really like that path. There's one difficulty where it's really, really difficult, but the rest of it, the time, it's very, very fun, regardless. Amazing indeed! Another relaxing campsite ready and waiting for Zumbinis! And they'll need their rest. The darkest most dangerous part of the journey is yet to come! <laughs> well, that was ominous. Yes, this is the second checkpoint, the Shade Tree. So luckily, if we lose any Zumbinis in the next area, we don't have to go back to Shelter Rock. We will go back here, and it functions basically the same. You've got these nice little wooden cubby holes. Kindergartners may store their things there, or Zumbinis may stay there until... At such a time, you want to bring them forward. Shade Tree, amazing indeed. Another relaxing campsite, ready and waiting for the Zumbinis. You'll need to have 16 Zumbinis placed on the stones lining the path before the entire group can continue their journey. They're almost to their new homeland. To store Zumbinis, place them in the slots built into the tree. Click on the thin bars to the left and right to scroll through the shelter. It's the same thing that Shelter Rock said. And also, if you went to the swamp to the north, that will also take you to the Shade Tree at the end. So this is where the forks uh, converge once again. And as you can see in the distance, there's some mountains. That's where we'll be going in the next world. And that's where we're going to be going in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Colorful Hardy. I hope to see you then. Until then, have a great day and God bless.